check out the gorgeous sunrise on this Thursday morning in San Diego. Just spectacular. Welcome back, everybody. President Obama made his pitch about health care to the American people last night. And uh, joining us on the phone live from Washington is Congressman Brian Bilbray, who was uh, there front and center listening to it. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Sandra. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, waking up early and being here. Uh, your initial thoughts on the, uh, the, the president's speech. It was uh, tough. It was conciliatory in some respects to Republicans. Um, he left a lot of wiggle room out there. And uh, this morning, Joe Biden says that he expects a bill to be in place by Thanksgiving. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think, um, first of all, you know, let's face it, this is the best uh, orator since Ronald Reagan. The president really can give a, a, a great speech. I think the biggest question is to see the bill that he's talking about, because I think a lot of the confusion that went on, at least on the House side, is that uh, the president was talking about his bill, and the only thing we've seen is actually the Waxman bill, which had all of the problems in it that the president said that he was going to avoid. Um, and what I'm hearing is that maybe it's the Senate proposal that's coming out that what he was talking about, because there were you know, a lot of those issues about how it was going to be paid for and a lot of other things that that needed to be clarified, but I think that what he was doing was moving away from the Waxman House of Representatives bill and moving towards something that is going to come out of the Senate. He says that the size of uh, his health insurance plan, uh, $900 billion over 10 years, that, that's a smaller figure than the House approved, right? Well, it's much smaller, but you got to remember, he's talking about within 10 years, but it's only five years of the program. So. That $900 billion or almost a trillion is a five-year number. So we're looking at almost a 2 to $3 trillion when you look at a 20-year projection. So you've got to watch Washington. I don't care who it is. They play these numbers and talk about 10 years from now, it's only going to cost us this much. But they don't tell you that the program doesn't start for five years. So really, that is a five-year projection. That's the kind of things that I think people have been upset with in the past. And I don't think even this president can get away with continuing to work the numbers. Um, the president's speech last night w was pretty tough. He blasted uh, critics who he said uh, are representing what exactly is in the, the various health care bills and, and spreading false rumors about that. But he also he, uh, he laid out some olive branches, one of them being the, the malpractice issue. Well, I think he, he brought up legitimately that nobody can ignore this, and this is what Congress has been ignoring, the huge amount that 8 to 10 percent of the cost of health care is nothing but paying off the, the, um, the, the legal system for um, paying tribute there. I think the problem is the president said that he was going to try to do it with administratively rather than demanding that Congress include it in the legislation. And I, I think that in all fairness, the president raised the issue but did not um, demand that the leaders in the, the uh, House and the Senate take on their friends, the trial lawyers, and include tort reform in that package. And that's one of those issues that I think that is, is there. You know, we're, we're talking a lot about coverage, but we're not talking about cost reduction. And I think the president admitted last night that cost reduction is going to be important. And a lot of people are asking, why aren't we doing that first? Why aren't we going after the waste, fraud, and abuse that the president talks about um, and get that done? Do the heavy lifting, do the tough work before we start making any new promises. The president also pushed his uh, public option plan um, for universal health care. Uh, this morning, uh, the GOP says that they will vehemently oppose the bill, even if that public option is dropped. Well, I think he, the president um, came over to an idea that I've been pushing for a long time, is why um, force the public to have a choice between big business and big government? Why don't we look at the credit union concept, and that is a co-ops, allow people to cooperate together and give them independence. Um, that's one of those things of why give them just one choice with a government program when we could give them hundreds of choices with cooperatives with the credit union model, which is one of the most successful segments of our financial services program. If you remember, they weren't the ones who were having major, major problems last year. That I see the president moving over to a position that I've been trying to push for a long time, and that is the credit union option. Congressman, Democrats say that if this bill, if a bill is not um, passed this year, that it'll be a decade or more before a health care bill in America is passed. Do you agree with that? And how likely do you think that a bill will be passed by the now, end of this year? I think this game of all or nothing is really a problem. The so-called comprehensive concept 
has been now a sort of a, um, a code word for, look, we want to take a bitter pill, wrap it in a lot, of pro- um, a lot of promises, and have the American people swallow it. And I don't care if it's amnesty with immigration or if it's talking about how we're going to mandate um, certain federal standards on, on 300 million people, the largest health care system in the world by a factor of five. Um, I think that we ought to be talking about where can we agree? Can we, do we allow portability? Do we allow cross-state? Do we allow to give the same tax credits to individuals that we give the big business and big labor? Those are all things, the 80% that we can agree on. I think we can do those things, and I don't think it's an all or nothing. I think that, um, you know, that evolution has always been the way our countries address it. We don't like radical change. We like moderate, steady pace. And I think paying for this is going to be the big problem. And if we want the right to be able to tell people we're going to promise more coverage, then we have the responsibility to eliminate the waste, fraud, and abuse up front and earn the trust of the American people. I think the biggest thing we've heard um, in the last month was the fact of don't go to the American people and say, I'm from Washington, I'm here, trust me. They said, wait a minute, we've trusted you a long time, you've always let us down. Why don't you do some of the responsible things like eliminate the freight, fraud, waste, and abuse before you ask us to pay anymore? Congressman, thank you so much for your thoughts this morning. We appreciate it. What are you up to in Washington today? Oh, well, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. Well, actually, right now I'm trying to clarify the um, the big hoopla last night over um, the fact that the House bill eliminated the requirement that you have to check that people were legally in the, the country before mm-hmm. um, they get health care benefits. So we've got to make sure we clarify that, that the president did, um, thought that it was covered. And even he, is this month, is requiring all federal contractors to use E-Verify. I'm sure that when he gets all the facts, he will agree with those of us that say, look, the only way to keep illegal and use E-Verify just as he's making contractors do this month um, across the country. Sounds like you've got a busy